As a gig worker using all these apps we have today, is it a possibility of having too many gig apps to use? Is it a real thing? So I believe in multi-apping and I believe in having different options and different opportunities to do gigs, especially the ones that require you to go on your phone and go out in the field like DoorDash or Uber Eats. And so I like downloading these apps and using them, but I think I came to the conclusion that yes, there's a possibility of having too many apps on the phone, too many choices because the reality is, you know, when you have too many apps, it's kind of like outside out of mind, right? You only see three or four apps that you use and that the other ones kind of go away. But I wanted to make this video to show you all the apps I have on my phone. That way you can see as a viewer or a potential gig worker, what kind of apps are available, what you can do with them and just the potential because there are more apps than just delivery ones that we all know of, the DoorDash, just the Uber Eats or even Rideshare, Lyft and Uber. There are plenty of apps. Now, I haven't used every single app on my phone, but I did check through them and, you know, kind of see what they're about. So in the end, yes, there's too many apps on the phone, on my phone. You can only have so many apps on at once and you can only do so many things at one time, but having the option to check out other apps when you need to is great. So let's check out these apps on my phone and I'll show you some apps that you probably don't even know exist. So here we are on my phone, uh, all the apps on my phone. So I kind of organize all my apps on like two pages on my phone. This is an Android phone. So I have two pages of apps. And as you see, there's a lot of them. There's about a good, <laughs> a good 30 apps that I can be using, but I don't use all of them. So the apps I use the most are the food delivery ones, the ones that everyone knows about, right? The DoorDashes, the Uber Eats, the Grubhubs, the formerly Postmates, Caviar, you name it, and some other delivery apps like Roadie. So I'm not gonna go open those apps and talk about that because everyone knows what those apps are. But the ones that you should be looking out for that may pique your interest, there are, you know, some opportunities for work are other apps like uh, on the field, I guess, secret shopper apps. So like Observa is one of them. So Observa, you also have Microwork right next to it and Field Agent. So these apps, you know, Observer, Microwork, Field Agent, you're, you're generally just going to the store, taking pictures of what they would ask for. Let's say they want you to take pictures of beef jerky or something like that and do some data entry and then you get paid, you know, three, four, five bucks, 10 bucks, or they'll ask you to buy like a case of, uh, you know, soda, drink it and test it out. I do have videos on Philly Agent on my channel and Microwork is pretty similar. You're taking pictures of things you have at home so they can kind of process like the branding and stuff. But yeah, those apps are, they're micro tasks, they're small pays, small earnings. They're not something you would use to earn full-time income or even part-time. It's like very minuscule tasks that you can do on the side. So then you have Amazon Flex, which is an app I've worked on and I have videos on that too. You have deliveries for packages, deliveries for food, grocery shopping on that app. And Roadie is kind of the similar thing. I also have a video on my channel for that. Now, as you see in the top left corner, I have self-employed, which is QuickBooks self-employed. That is not necessarily a gig app, but it's where I use to track my earnings and mileage. So it's a good thing to have if you're doing all these apps, all these side hustles or businesses to keep track of your stuff, but that's not necessarily a gig app. Then you can see other things like Winolo, Workwhile, Instawork, Jive, ShiftSmart, GigWalk, Get Gigs. Easy Shift, uh, Idea. These are all apps that give you kind of like the part-time job stats without being an employee. So let's say they want you to go to a warehouse to do some package auditing or to help pack things in a warehouse or to help move things. You might go there for four to eight hours. You get paid, you know, a good hefty amount for mostly a full shift, right? Pretty much on demand shifts. So you get to have kind of employee work without the employee kind of restraints. You just go there when they need you. So for example, Winolo, you're gonna find jobs in your area. And you can see, you know, these the pay is pretty much minimum wage, depending on where you live, it could be different. But you can see right here, logistics, fulfillment warehouse, right? Like I mentioned earlier, you get paid for eight hours of work or whatever, or four hours, you know? There are a bunch of these jobs on these apps like Instawork, Winolo, Adia. They're, they're apps that give you pretty much on-demand shifts without the employee restraints. But you kind of have to schedule at least four to eight hours of time to do these kind of things. So you can find work. I generally don't use these apps because I, I find it hard to commit myself to eight hours to doing these shifts and the pay can be very low. But it is an opportunity to make money if you want to. So this is Instawork, it's the same thing, right? You can be a buster. So if you if you have retail experience or restaurant industry experience, you can make some money, right? So a buster, dishwasher, and these are shifts that are available in your area. You have to check it out. But all these apps I'm showing you, I, I will have some sort of links or maybe some sort of way for you to check it out down below. I may not have every single link for every single app I use. So you're gonna have to use this video and pause and to see what interests you and what you wanna download. 
So the next type of apps I have too are apps that are like shopping wise. So I already talked about the Amazon Flex, which is grocery delivery, but you don't shop for it. So apps like Shipped, Instacart, Corner Shop, they require you to go shop for the items and deliver it. I've done Corner Shop before, which is the app right here with the avocado icon. Not my favorite app, but it's there. So you have opportunities to do that if you choose to shop instead of just straight up deliver from the restaurants. So they're good apps to have. Then you have other things that are kind of just random like Lime. So you pick up scooters or jump. You pick up screws, you charge them, and you deliver it back to the city. I never tried it myself. I downloaded the app, but I couldn't justify the pay that they're advertising per scooter and just going back and forth. So it's there if you are interested in doing that. If you have a bigger car, that might be a perfect way for you to make money. So TaskRabbit is something I'm looking forward to do in the future. Um, I have set up my profile. It's an app that lets you do like handyman tasks. So let's say you assemble IKEA furniture or you're doing things like doing errands for someone. And this is an app that where you can set your own rates. This is the app I feel like you can be a real gig worker, right? You set your own rates, you are your own boss. Not like the delivery stuff where you're kind of waiting for an order and you accept it based on the pay. On the TaskRabbit app, you can set the skills that you are good at or that you can provide and you can set a price. So you can see like automotive, car washing, so on, delivery. The ones that have the dollar signs are the ones that I've already set up, but yeah. So it's a good app to put your personal taste, your personal skills to the test to get paid, um, but you do have to book your clients. So you're gonna see other apps too that are kind of like complimentary. So along with Self-Employed, which is the QuickBooks app for tax and mileage, there's the Para app, which people may know about if you're a gig worker and you watch YouTube. Then you have Survey base gigs these are also like micro tasks or small pay but they can make you some money they're not going to be you know ten dollars a survey but survey junk is one of them i also have a video on that this is what i use to like get some amazon gift cards pre-okay app and amazon panel which is a app that i love using so this is where you take pictures of receipts and you get about ten dollars in gift rewards from amazon every month and i have a couple of videos on that as well very consistent it's the best survey or receipt based cash rewards type app um, i've been using using for the last year. And another couple of apps are delivery based are kind of niche is is a uh, GoPuff, which is this Go Drive right here, and also Point Pickup. These are the apps where I haven't dived into much. So GoPuff, I signed up for it. The process kind of sucked, the sign up process. And the way they have things lined out just doesn't make any sense, but I know there's potential there with GoPuff now being under Uber, I believe. So alcohol delivery could be a thing to make you big money and Point Pickup is just not available in my area, unfortunately. So you also see Lyft driver. I was right shirt driver before. That's the thing I no longer do, but I do keep it around just if I ever wanted to do it again, I can use it. Now, some apps I do not have on here that other people may have or that might be common is Spark Delivery, which is Walmart deliveries. I don't have that in my area, but that's an app that you could use too if you want to do more delivery stuff. Um, there's apps like Favor, Burpee. These are shopping type apps. So of these 30 apps, I only use about five, six, seven of them about four of them at the time, which is the delivery apps with one outlier being Amazon Flex and Rody. But yeah, I have all these apps. I don't use all of them because sometimes it's just an overload. But if I really wanted to check something out, it's there. Most of the times I don't check these other apps, but I like having the options. Now, over time, I might just delete these apps because they waste so much space on my phone and updates. But yeah, if you're a gig worker and you're looking to expand your app repertoire in terms of gig work, you know, here are some suggestions, right? All these apps I have on my all the apps I have on my phone right here are pretty good suggestions for you to check out. Some may be a type of work that you like, some are not that great for you, but I think there's something for everyone here. So check out the apps. Having a lot of gig apps can be good, but could also be bad. You know, sometimes too much is just too much. <laughs> So I hope this video was informational, entertaining, or at least insightful to kind of see what's like, you know, as a gig worker, kind of having options and just the idea of choosing what works for you. So give me a like, subscribe to this channel. I'm AC Dreamer, check it out. Have a good rest of your week. Peace out.